Hi dear students, I am Deepthi. Welcome to an interesting journey into science. When we study science, it is not easy to study every aspect in one go. We have to classify various concepts into different branches and then understand their meaning, history, scientific developments, inventions and discoveries. We expand our knowledge of science further, understanding the theories, laws, facts, definitions, structures, processes and so on. You will see that as we go step by step, it unravels the secrets of nature. In this journey, we will study one of the branches of science called biology. What do you understand by the term biology? It is the science or study of living organisms, that is, plants, animals and microorganisms. The word biology is a Greek word used for the first time by a French scientist Jean Lamarck. In Greek, bios means life and logos means a study of. Hence, biology is the study of living beings. Let us observe this interesting conversation between a brother and sister. What is this subject biology? What do we study in biology? My dear child, biology is a very interesting subject. In essence, biology is the study of every aspect of living organisms, which includes the appearance, the structure which is both internal and external, the functioning like feeding, breathing, moving, growth, development, reproduction and propagation. And we also learn how living forms adjust to changes in surroundings and solve the problems encountered in their lives. Wow! You have said so many things. Can you please be more clear? Okay. I will give you a broad idea with the help of images and animations on my laptop. Come with me. When you are hungry, what do you do? I eat something, of course. That's right. This is called feeding. All animals and plants need food. See how human beings and animals eat food? We understand the aspects of what each animal eats, how it eats, how the food is digested, etc. Do you know what breathing is? By studying biology, we can understand how different animals breathe. Some breathe through skin, some through lungs, and aquatic animals like fish breathe through gills. Breathing is the process in which the body takes in oxygen and expels the carbon dioxide out of the body. You know there is a difference between breathing in plants and animals. The systematic study of biology as you go from class to class will make you understand these concepts in more detail. Do you know what microorganisms are? On earth, there are a number of organisms out of which few are so tiny that they cannot be seen with the naked eye. We have to use an instrument called microscope to see them. Some of them are free living, some are useful to other animals, while some are harmful and cause diseases. See, here is the microscope. Now I'll show you some microorganisms. You have been talking about animals. Are plants not living organisms? Yes, they are living organisms. The study of biology involves both animals and plants. When we study plants, we learn about how the plants germinate, how they grow, how they feed, how the flowers are formed, 
how fruits are formed and how seeds are formed from these fruits and as a result of sowing these seeds new plants are formed who oh, that is very interesting okay dear child that's more than enough for today go and play students you have just heard an interesting and informative conversation between a brother and sister wasn't it great now let us know about the origin of biology biology is not a science of recent origin it is one of the oldest branches of science as old as the human race man has been studying biology since the emergence of human race since ages man has been interested in knowing about his birth growth diseases death etc man has learnt about these aspects by observing the plants and animals around him and applied this knowledge for the betterment of human race he has always been interested in knowing about the plants and animals which provided him with food shelter and many other benefits he has also been curious to know which plants have medicinal values since ages man has been trying to improve the plants and animals to obtain better yields the quest for knowledge in biology started several centuries ago and is still going on it's a never ending process of discovery and rediscovery man in the early days when there was no technology was called a nomad do you know what that is nomadic means that the man used to wander in forests and mountains hunting and collecting food he was just a food gatherer in this process he collected information about various plants and animals which was very useful to him this knowledge has been passed on from generation to generation does your grandmother or grandfather tell you interesting stories about how life in their days used to be how they lived what they used to eat what they did for fun etc so the information is passed on from generation to generation if the knowledge we inculcate in our lifetime is not passed on to the next generation it will be lost and our future generation will not be able to improve upon the previous known knowledge knowledge of biology was not gained in a day or two it has been accumulating over a period of several centuries the earliest written records of biology are that of aristotle and of galen before them there were some writings on the walls of caves after aristotle and galen no systematic studies were carried out in biology for the next 1000 years sadly enough this is because during that period religious views and studies dominated over scientific study we refer to that period as dark age of science interest in biology was revived only in the 16th century by the works of Vesalius and William Harvey Vesalius ushered in the science of comparative anatomy he proved galen wrong and showed that humans were different from animals Harvey was a physician who made a number of discoveries concerning the human body and created the science of biology there are several thousands of scientists who have been studying biology over the centuries their work has helped us in understanding the various aspects of biology notable among them are lamarck darwin pasteur gener ross schwann avery watson and crick kurana etc and this list is not complete as several thousands of biologists are still contributing every day to our knowledge base in biological sciences contributions made by one scientist 
become the beginning for another scientist knowledge gained in biology in the past 50 years is much more than the knowledge gained in past 20 centuries this knowledge in biology has helped us to solve several problems faced by the human race in regards to food shelter environment and health